Okay, so we're replacing our old AGM lead acid batteries with rely, rely on 300 amp hour batteries. We have four AGMs that come standard in the Leopard, and in fact, the battery compartment is made to fit those AGM batteries. So we're replacing them with three 300 amp rely ons with another slot available for another 300 amp rely on should we choose to do so down the road. However, it's important to know that this compartment area on the Leopard Cat is made for that AGM lead acid battery. And by that what I mean is its width and its length is made to fit this slot so they don't slide around while you're sailing. They do put this one little small piece of starboard here in the end and that helps keep it in place as well. The rely on, however, won't fit in there that way because it is wider than the AGM battery. So if you take a look at this rely on, what we've done is put it on its side, and on its side, it fits perfectly in the slot. It is still got a slight bit up forward, and so up forward there, we'll take this piece of starboard and we'll cut just a small piece of that off and be able to place it right back in there give a nice solid platform for that rely on. So these will end up being on their sides. We'll have one, two, three. The lead acid will come out soon. It's only here so we can have some 12 volt till we finish our project. And then we'll have room for another fourth one should we choose to do that down the road. But 1200 amp hours of lithium ion batteries should be more than substantial for living on the hook. Okay, we placed three of the 300 amp hour rely on lithium ion batteries in the slots where the four AGM lead acid batteries used to be. As we mentioned before, we turned them on their side. They fit perfectly in the slot that was made for the AGM. We'll cut a small piece of starboard, put it forward of them to keep them from sloshing. There was a question of whether or not the new height of this battery would fit with the battery compartment closed. And so, just to show you, in fact, not a problem. It does fit just right, just perfectly. So those batteries on their side fit in the slot. They're well secured. The one correction you have to make is this tie bolt which goes on to the crossbar that holds them in place is now too short so you'll have to get a new tie bar and have that made uh, have someone do this for you so that you can secure it in place with the top bolt on there so there you have it it's a great installation forget that you see that AGM up there because it will come out and then we'll have just the three and a spare slot for another 300 amp hour rely on battery so PLR is installing three large lithium ion batteries to replace their older technology batteries where the lithium ion batteries have a lot of advantages but they are um, require a little bit more control and technology so as a part of that we're installing individual battery monitors one for each battery each of three so that we can monitor each battery separately in terms of its performance and then that also gives you the ability to uh, the internal regulator of the battery, right? Mm -hmm. that, way, that way you know um, the state of charge of each battery and you can also tell if one of the batteries trips offline uh, due to its internal regulator. Whereas if they were all in one bank you wouldn't really be able to tell. You wouldn't know and you could overcharge the ones that are left on the, on the line. Right. And so where are you mounting these monitors? into the uh, navigation station, one of the panels here, where the now um, not used ICOM, no. Uh, the Iridium. The Iridium uh, satellite yeah, system. So we remove the radio and we're placing them in there. And then those will lead down to a shunt, right? Yeah, individual shunts, three individual shunts in the uh, DC, in the DC uh, room downstairs where the new battery cables will come through into and connect to the shunts. So you have individual negatives coming to each of those individual shunts Correct. and then the battery monitor measures across that shunt. That's right. Current, voltage, and temperature of each battery. Great. Alright, so 
What do you think? Maybe another half hour or so? Thereabouts. Or yeah. in a day. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Give me an hour. Give me an hour. <laughs> Here's uh, Bill's new shunt board for the three new batteries. So the new battery cable connections will come from the batteries themselves to the new shunt board. Getting ready to mount that in a convenient place where the rest of the 12 volt battery cables come into. So here's all of the existing bus oh, bars for the 12 volt coming from uh, the batteries and then obviously to all the 12 volt operating systems on the boat. That was existing and there wasn't enough room um, on this bus bar to put our three new shunts. That is an individual shunt for each of the new lithium ion batteries. So we did design and make that new shunt board um, and it is put on a piece of phenolic and then set off from the back. So this is where we're going to run all of the new three battery cables and the battery monitor wiring to go uh, monitor each of those bat batteries individually. Looks good. Looks great. Three, four, five, six. That gets us to right here, which is well within this. So all we got to do is stay within this edge right here. How do you know that? Huh? How do you know that? What do you down mean? Below? Now I look down below. Give me that. Open space all the way down. Give me that. Are you sure about that? Yeah, right. get down and look. All right, let's do it. Huh? Let's do it. Get down and look. So somehow you managed to get six cables out of there. But one new hole in there, right? Yep. Alright. We're um, finally getting to the point where we can tie the batteries in. So we run all these cables. We ran six new cables um, from this batter area down to the bus bar below deck, which was a challenge in itself. Um, and we did that so that we could have all the batteries individually monitored um, and to their own meter as well. So this should be really nice once it all comes together. Steven, tell us about what you're doing. We're putting the heat shrink on the ends of the cables. We uh, built the cables, crimped them on with the Fittings on the end, and now we're just heat shrinking a little protective. Done yet? What? Done yet? Almost. I had to do a little bit of a redo. All right. It's split on me twice now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Shrink quite as much, and if you can't get that to work, we're just not going to put shrink on here. It's not really necessary. Okay, we're putting our um, fuses in here for the battery monitors on batteries one, two, and three. The lead, ad lead acid battery is still there, but we're gonna leave it alone for the time being. And we're going straight to all of these lithium ion batteries. When you put those fuses in, that's gonna make the uh, meters live. Right. So this is one of our final steps and then uh can't wait to turn it on. We are turning on our lithium ion batteries for the first time ever. After all of the mounting and the cable running that Bill helped us with. I'm scared. Bill did. Okay, do it. All right, you gonna do it, Bill? Do it, do it, do you it. Ready, Bill? Yeah. Oof, 100 amps. Shouldn't be charging that high. Something came on. Oh, it's charging. It's, it's pull, that Magnum's putting 100 amps into that battery. I heard something come on when I turned it on. Oh, let's what do this. Huh? Yeah. Let's do 
All right. the charger I, I just turned the charger off because I don't think we want to charge one at a time. Okay, we mounted three 300 amp hour lithium ion batteries in place of the old lead acid batteries that we had. And the old lead acids were all joined together at the battery compartment and then one set of leads was brought back into the main bus area. Instead, we brought separate leads for every one of the batteries there. So we have uh, room for a fourth battery. So you'll see four positive leads coming from the battery compartment to this bus. You'll also see four negative leads coming from the battery compartment to this bus. And then we also tied in, if you'll see over there, those smaller wires and resistors are for three separate battery meters that we mounted up in the nav station. So quite a bit of work when we pulled all of these cables back here, made the cables as well, and then put those battery meters on them too. So here's those three new 300 amp hour each lithium ion batteries. You'll, you will see one lead acid battery is still in there. We left it in there while we were making the changeover, but we did go ahead and disconnect that lead acid battery. So obviously we have a slot available for a fourth 300 amp hour uh, lithium ion battery. Here's the individual meters that we put up on the um, nav station for each of the separate three lithium ion batteries. So that'll be nice to be able to monitor to those individually. That's why we had to run all those leads back to the bus bar and then the meter off of the bus bar so that we could monitor them individually. Today we have started step one of our solar upgrade and battery upgrade to lithium. So here's the, the uh, mess so far. It's always a mess when you're doing boat projects. And there's Bill. Bill's the ship's engineer. Today. He's also an electrical engineer. And uh, Bill's doing the alternator switch today, right? Right, so the lithium ion batteries are great, but they do require a little more regulation. So the standard alternators on the Yanmar diesels uh, need to be switched out for something that has a more precise regulator. So that's the first task, is to get that charging source regulated. Marine grade battery cable. Copper, tinned copper, fine, fine uh, strand, very flexible. You don't want to use any other kind out here and very thick very thick two knot two knot wire in the trade as it's known in the trade and i'm going to strip it it's just not trivial don't want to cut a wire or you don't want to cut a wire, so that's why you use this fancy thing. And you just have to get the insulation off of it. Okay, and then it's got to go right in the battery terminal before it gets all frayed. Oops, got afraid. strand in there. Okay. Then my favorite tool of the day. Bought just for the job. Just like Christmas over here with yes, these sir. tools. That's why I do this stuff so I can buy new tools. Crimp. Professionally and then, done. Then you put a second one on it. Okay. 
and that is properly done, and then you put a piece of shrink tubing on it, and shrink that down, and it seals it with epoxy as you shrink it, or not epoxy, but glue, and that's the cable. Go. Cool. All right, so I got to measure the other end of it now. Here's the port side engine before modification with an old style uh, battery combining uh, relay and an old Vallejo internally regulated alternator. On the starboard side we see the after with a new alternator uh, which uses an external regulator which is shown here, that regulator will perform a programmed charge profile needed for the lithium batteries and a new battery combining automatic combining relay.